All right, in this video, let's start with the very first hook, which is the state hook. Up until now, if you started writing a functional component and then ran into a situation where you needed to add state, you would have to convert the component to a class component. That is simply because state could only be used in class components. That is about to change because the state hook, which we will learn in this video, allows us to use state within functional components. To understand how the state hook works, we are going to take a look at a simple counter example. And for the benefit of those who are learning hooks with the knowledge of class components, I will start off the video by implementing the counter with a class component and then implement the same with functional components and the state hook. If you are new to React and starting off with just hooks, you don't have to worry about the class component implementation. Alright, to get us started, I have already created a project using Create React App. The first thing I'm going to do is in app.js, get rid of the header and the logo import. Now we can get started with the code. First up, a counter using a class component. In the source folder, I'm going to create another folder called components. Within the folder, I'm going to create a file called classcounter.js. Within this file, we implement the class-based counter component. I'm going to use the snippet rce to create a class component and get rid of the named export. Next, create a state variable called count and initialize it to zero. After that, create a method called increment count, which increments the count value by one. So this dot set state count is going to be this dot state dot count plus one. In the render function for the JSX, add a button. On click of that button, call the increment count method. And for the inner text, we display the count value. So count is going to be this dot state dot count. Finally, in the app component, include the class counter component. If we now save the files and take a look at the browser, we should have a button with count initialized to zero. I click on the button and the count value increments. Pretty straightforward, but I want you to keep in mind the three steps which are necessary to implement this counter. The first step is to create a component and we have used a class component. The second step is to create a state variable initialized to zero. The last step is to create a method that is capable of setting this state value. With these three steps in mind, let's see how to implement the same counter with a functional component and the state hook. Within the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called hookcounter.js. And within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a functional component. As part of the JSX, I'm going to add a button. The button will have an onClick handler and also the count as the inner text. We will fill them in shortly. Now back to our three steps necessary to implement the counter. First step is to create a component. We have already done that, but this time we have created a functional component. Step two, we need a state property initialized to zero. And step three, we need a method capable of setting that state property value. Since we are working with a functional component, we cannot use state like we did before. We need a different way to implement steps two and three. And that is where the use state hook comes into picture. If you remember, a hook is just a special function that lets you 
hook into React features. So use state is a hook that lets you add React state to functional components. Let's take a look at the code. We begin by importing it from React. So use state, which is a named import. Now, the question is, how do we use it in our component? Well, hooks are just functions, so we simply call them. Use state. This hook or function accepts an argument, which is the initial value of the state property and returns the current value of the state property and a method that is capable of updating that state property. Now that sounds more complicated than it is, so let me show you the code. So use state accepts the initial value of the state variable, which is zero, and returns a pair of values. Current value of the state variable, which we are going to call as count, and a method that can update the state variable, which we are going to call as set count. This syntax right here is called array destructuring, which is a feature in ES6. If you're unaware of what is array destructuring, pause the video, quickly read up on the topic, and then resume. Shouldn't take you more than five minutes. Now the names count and set count are chosen so that it makes sense when you read the code, but you can name them anything you want to. Could be number and set number, or even completely random variable names like subscribe or enable notifications. All right, with this, we basically have our step two and step three implemented. A state variable, count initialized to zero, and a method, set count, capable of changing the count variable. We can now use these variables in the JSX. The inner text, count is what we want to render and on click we call set count passing in the new count value and what is the new count value current count plus one and since this becomes a function call let's convert it into an arrow function and that is pretty much it we have implemented all the three steps we have a functional component, a state variable initialized to zero, and we also have a method that is capable of updating the state variable. Back in app component, let's comment out class counter and include the hook counter. If we now save the files and take a look at the browser, the counter works exactly like before. So this is a basic example of how to use the state hook in React. Import useState, call it passing in a default value, assign the return pair of values to variables using array destructuring and use them in the render function. The variable count will always contain the current state value and set count will accept an argument and set count value to that argument. And how does this work with our counter example? Well, the very first time the component renders, a state variable is created and initialized with the default value of zero. The default value is never used on re-renders. When you click on the button, the set count method is called, which will add one to the current count value. On first click, count is incremented to one from zero. After that, the setCount method will cause the component to re-render. After the re-render, count will contain a value of one, which is then displayed as part of the inner text in the browser. Now, if you're wondering why we would want to use this as opposed to class component and this dot state, we already talked about that in the previous video. Now, there are two important rules that you have to follow when using hooks. And I just want to mention it here so that you're not going to try writing code in a way it isn't supposed to be. The first rule is that only call hooks at the top level. Use hooks at the top level of your React function 
and don't call hooks inside loops, conditions, or nested functions. The second rule is only call hooks from React functions. Make sure you call them within React functional components and not just any regular JavaScript function. Both these rules are crucial to how hooks work. So accept these rules for now. We'll talk more about why we need to follow them later on in the series. Well, with that, we wind up our introduction and the first example on the state hook. Let's take a look at the next example in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.